What's going on, my patients? Welcome to the humble offices of the Rectangular Pharmaceutical Company, in which I, your host, Dr. Rectango, will allow you to refill on that pre-prescribed doses of quality information, news, and gameplay. But don't worry, the gameplay is not here, but the other two are here in bulk, just fresh off the truck, just in store for all of you. So, Square Enix, it's time for your checkup, and I'm glad that you're here. Unfortunately, though, you have stepped and shift time and 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 you might need some of this. Yes, thank you. There you go, Square. Time and time and time and time and time and time and time again! Yet, I'm glad you finally came here. And the reason why I say this is because you start off with a beautiful assortment of Final Fantasy games. You can start off with the early days. You can start about the golden era, your time, your pinnacle of all Final Fantasies. Number seven. You know, Final Fantasy VII, the one that you've been trying to milk for the past six years because you realize that you've lost focus and you can't do anything else correctly because every other move that you've made under the sun has either been hit with scrutiny, controversy, or outrage in some way, shape, form, or facet. Now, we're going to get to those and we're going to address those before the bigger issue that I need to talk about. But let's just start off with the positives. Final Fantasy VII comes in, sweeps the nation by storm. Gamers everywhere, praise be to Lord Square. We're not worthy of this quality. Final Fantasy VIII comes out, and as we all know, it had impossible shoes to fill with its predecessor, Final Fantasy VII, being basically the huge classic of the JRPG and pretty much setting the tone for what JRPGs will become in the future. Final Fantasy VII was it. Final Fantasy VIII? Big shoes to fill, impossible to fill. Now, granted, not as loved as 7, but people still loved it. The 9, 10, 10, 2, all coming down the pipeline. People still loving 11 to this very day. And that tells you something, that people will still play this game. Even though they know it's coming to a close. People have played this game almost as long as Obama has been in office, and that is just mind-bogglingly staggering. It's nuts! People love themselves some Final Fantasy XI. Especially with the online features. People love these things. But Square. Yeah, I guess it's time we talk about it. You fucked up. You fucked up. Get whatever lubricant of your choice. Because you fucked up. What did they do? How did they fuck up? Allow me to explain. Final Fantasy XI. It's online support will be cut. Got. Bodied. Cut to a crisp. Nuked from orbit. Whatever you want to call it. However, no matter what service I've ever ordered in the past, whether it be a good, a service in transit, whether it be a streaming service, whether it be a video game, whether it be some sort of online pass, if it gets cut and no longer exists, that means no more money can get to it, correct? It's gone. It's deleted. The product no longer exists. The service can no longer be paid for because it no longer exists. However, Square has decided, if you have an email signed up for Final Fantasy XI Online, if we cut it off, you still will pay us unless you manually go into your account and disable the auto-renew service. Look, Square. The fact that you thought at some point in life that this was a good idea, because I understand that you guys said you lost focus as a company, you don't know how to make good games anymore, but obviously treating the customer like a human being is something that you also lost a long way. So allow me to re-educate you. You're cutting off the service, meaning the product does not exist, but you are still going to even allow an avenue, consciously knowing that it exists, you're going to allow an avenue for your fans, the people who've been supporting your backbone, for years, even against their better judgment when certain issues come out, like the release of Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah, we ain't forgot. Anyway, you're going to allow people who have supported you even since those dark days to even have money siphoned from their accounts to go to a game that no longer exists because you ended it and you cut it off. Pause. If any other service does that, they're going to be met with scrutiny, attacks. Dare I say outrage? Dare I say a community revolt of some sort? But here you are acknowledging that this can happen and you're doing nothing about it, nothing to rectify it. You are letting people know that we will still, as a company, take your money for a product that we no longer provide 
unless you go into your account settings and disable everything using your email, et cetera, et cetera. When a lot of people may not even know their ID information because, you know, it's been so long, you know, people, people do that. But at the end of the day, you really don't think that's a good idea? When people have problems even signing into half your shit <laughs> and you thought this was a good idea. Bravo. Bravo, Square. Bravo. You done fucked up, Square. You have. I don't know who you thought was going to tell you that this was a good idea, but it's not going to happen here. And it's not going to happen from your legions of fanboys who are going to be carnivorous and pretty much eat you guys alive if you allow this to just roll over whenever you shut the game down. I believe you said in March, but there's still time for a month. Maybe things will change. But if you're really going to do that, you're shit company. And you know, you know you're being shit heels right there. You know you're doing it. But moving on from there, let's talk about Final Fantasy XIV, because you see, Final Fantasy XIV, even you guys have acknowledged, was the big blemish, the eyesore, the big cancer, the big tumor that lived in your chest that you wish you could just cut out and wish that it never happened and wish that it just went away. And it was due to your own damn stubbornness and not listening to your fans. You know, the people who pay you because you're supposed to give them what they want. And then you even told your fans that they didn't know what they want, that they were wrong, then only to try to reconcile these differences, did you go back on just about everything you said, do a 180, and then make it what the fans wanted originally, trying to make your game good. We're not going to talk about that. We're not going to go that deep. You guys know where you fucked up there? Anyone who's been established with the Final Fantasy brand and knows its history knows all the juicy details about Final Fantasy XIV and what it entailed at its launch. Now... Let's move on to the upcoming 15. The game that you've delayed and delayed and delayed and then said it was going to come out, then you said it was going to be delayed, then you said it was going to come out, then it was delayed, then it was delayed, then you said it was going to come out, then it was going to be delayed, then it was delayed. So Final Fantasy 15 has probably been delayed at least 15 times at this juncture. And that's fine. Preserve it. Make sure its quality is here. Make sure everything goes to the unteenth degree of perfection. Here's my problem with this. When you delay a game and then you tell me that you're working on another game, I get worried that you might be having your studios, whether it's separate or not, working on too much at one time because quality is always the greater side over quantity. Look, giving us two games in a quick succession, whether it be Final Fantasy VII and XV coming, to, coming, coming together to culminate some gigantic Final Fantasy Fiesta, Triple F, if you know what I mean, maybe Final Fantasy Fiesta will be the new game. But the fact is this. You guys keep digging into this well of nostalgia, trying to get these nostalgia glasses put on all your fans with this Final Fantasy VII nonsense. Don't get me wrong, like I said, it was great. Part of the golden era. Established the meta on what JRPGs will be even to this day. But the fact of the matter is this. You announced an HD remake. But, oh wait, before that, you unlocked, you, 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 you launched a uh, HD remix. You remember on the PC over there on Steam, you know, HD remix, yeah, less polygons, yeah, looks smoother, yeah, nice and 1080p, remember that? Now you're doing a full-fledged Final 7, no, oh, Final Fantasy 7, excuse me, full-fledged remake with the bells, the whistle, the nuances, the new graphics, the new quest, the new engine, the new system. And now you've also had Cloud Strife. Starring in Super Smash Brothers for Wii U and 3DS as a DLC character. Now look, I get it. You want to preserve the nostalgia. You want to preserve the, the Final Fantasy VII essence. You want to make sure that it's never forgotten. And it never will be forgotten. As I said, it's set the status quo for what JRPGs have been for almost, what, a decade and a half now. It's been quite some time. But look at me, Square. Look, look at me. Look at me. You release this game? Sure, Final Fantasy 7 people go nuts. But if Final Fantasy 15 is ass, you're dead. You're done. You've tapped out. Your village is going to get pillaged. And you ain't got to worry about me making a video because I can't stop it. I can't help you. I will not be able to alleviate the anal rectum problems that you are going to have when people start trying to fish you into your colon and just take you for everything that you've got. Your fans, well, your current fans who will become your mortal enemies at that point. They're going to take care of that for everybody. You ain't going to have to worry about me uttering another word, participle phrase, verb, gerund, run on sentence. You're not going to have to worry about any of this. To everyone else you're going to have to worry about there on the horizon. And you know this, Square. 
You've showed us that you don't know how to make a game. You've met the scrutiny when you release Final Fantasy 13, when you release Lightning Returns. You don't need me for this. You don't. You know what's going to happen. You can only milk Final Fantasy 7 and this nostalgia for so long, and you are at the end of that very, 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 very thin, almost cut in half with rug burn and rope burn rope. You know this. If Final Fantasy XV, for whatever reason, does not meet expectations, even after all of these delays, you, you're going to need more tablets, son. You're going to need all the tablets. You're going to need this. You're going to need Pepto-Bismol. You're going to need, what, acid reflux. You're going to need vitamin. You're going to need Tylenol, Robitussin, because apparently Robitussin cures it. You're going to need every pharmaceutical drug and product that they have behind my pharmaceutical desk. And you're going to need it all, son. Cyclobenzaparin, Flexeril, you're going to need it all. Xanax, Gabapentin. There's a lot of different things we can prescribe for that ass whooping that is going to be coming and looming into the distance if you do not get your shit together, Square. I'm telling you. You're going to charge money for, for a service that no longer exists? And then you're going to compound that with the fact that you keep jumping on the Final Fantasy hype train? Only to churn out another piece of shit product? I, I just don't know. I just don't know. And this is under the assumption that your Final Fantasy VII Ultra Remake will be good. Because if that's not good... Oh, pack it up. Pa pack it up. I'll delete this video because I will have enough... There's nothing more I can say to you. So shape up. Shape up or get buff. That, those are your only two options, Square. I'm done. I've got nothing more to say. That's it.